I think VR and AR is definitely something that would bring medicine forward. Hi, uh, my name is Associate Professor Alfred Kao, Principal Investigator for the project uh, PASIT, the virtual reality training using uh, this tool to teach patients safety in surgery uh, as an interprofessional training tool. I think for patient safety training is because it's usually quite a niche area that is difficult to deliver during uh, conventional method of teaching such as using lectures and tutorials and the real-life experience should be a rather immersive ones but our current clinical training sometimes can be opportunistic not all patients or students will get experience in a similar manner as a result of that, using a standardized tools, uh, particularly with such immersive experience using virtual reality, will be able to allow us to create a uniform uh, training tool for our students, uh, particularly related to patient safety. I think past it taught me to actually uh, focus more on the small details, because often I think as uh, when when we follow surgeons around in postings, we actually look more at the the cases itself and and the technical details of the surgery, but we don't really go into the intricacies like the, the surgery details, the patient details, and uh, precautions to take note of. But these are things that actually can influence the surgery more than the actual surgery itself. Yeah, so I guess it's something that Pastit emphasised to me, and I think that's my greatest takeaway. In the recent years, uh, we have seen a rapid transformation of uh, digital adoption of uh, learning tools in various kinds of educational uh, uh, areas. And particularly in medical training, uh, the adoption of digital transformation is quite crucial. Uh, while the School of Medicine previously had the uh, virtual integrated human anatomy as a tool to teach anatomy, uh, there are not much of tools being used for clinical training. I think one of the initial obstacles really is the change of mindset about using gamification and advanced technology in education. Because healthcare is a, a rather conventional way of because we deal with patients and, and human beings and sometimes adoption and technology might not be so welcomed by uh, people who has been in the profession for a very long time. But what we do see is during COVID-19 period where Direct face-to-face -face teaching sessions are not allowed. A lot of people are now very open to the idea of adopting technology for training. And when PASSIT came out just right at the beginning of COVID-19, we have demonstrated how technology can be useful uh, to help to overcome this challenge. And since then, uh, this particular experience during COVID-19 has become a catalyst for many of our teachers in the School of Medicine to think outside of the box and to be happy to adopt technology in education. Um, when we went for hospital postings um, at the physical hospitals, because of COVID, we couldn't like um, go into the operating theatre very much. La. So in that sense, we didn't get to learn about um, the safety procedures and all that. So I feel that having such an immersive programme really um, taught us quite well. La, and I learned quite a lot, even though it was quite just 15 minutes. And we go to also add other professional, uh, allied health as well as nursing into the modules to ensure that this is a widespread uh, interprofessional training uh, tool, uh, pass it. It has revolutionised how medical training uh, is done and it has shown us how the future can look like. <laughs>